So as a 1970s scientist now, we have a new hypothesis, and it's the presence of these tumor suppressor genes. So once these growth suppressing genes are lost, the, the cancer cell growth accelerates. So th there's a, an, an analogy that you often see in the literature between onco genes and tumor suppressor genes. And, and if you think of the cell as a car, then the oncogenes are the accelerator of the car, okay? And you, you hyperactivate, you know, you push the accelerator more and the cell or the car grows faster, it goes faster, okay? Tumor suppressor genes are like the brakes of the car. The presence of these tumor suppressor genes halt cell growth, They're like the brake. Now, if you remove the brake, so if you mutate the tumor suppressor genes, you remove them, then you can't slow down the car, and therefore you get the car or the cell growing out of control. So tumor suppressor genes are like the brakes in the cell, whereas the onco genes are like the accelerators. So now we have this analogy to look at these new types of genes, these tumor suppressor genes. Um, so, sorry, so, so getting back to that um, fusion experiment, what we effectively were doing, the, um, the cancer cell had lost its brakes. And when you merge the cells, the, the brake function of the normal cell returned the um, hybrid cell into a normal cell. So the, effectively you've got the, the car brakes are here and you're putting the brakes back into this car here. Right. So again, just by comparing um, some of the characteristics of tumor suppressor genes with um, oncogenes, um, we find that more tumor suppressor genes are mutated in cancers than we find oncogenes hyperactivated. Okay? And that's because it's easier to inactivate a gene through mutation than it is to hyperactivate a gene through mutation. So it's quite difficult to hyperactivate an oncogene, but it's quite easy to knock out a tumor suppressor gene. Okay? And because the tumor suppressor genes are easier to knock out, so it's easier to remove the brakes, then more tumor suppressor genes are identified in cancer samples than oncogenes. And we, we, we discussed how in the RAS oncogene, there's only one or two positions in the entire sequence that when mutated lead to hyperactivation. Most mutations would lead to loss of activity, but there's, a, there's some key positions which are very important to the function of an oncogene. And when you mutate those, you can hyperactivate the protein. But for most of our tumor suppressor genes, which are acting as brakes rather than the RAS acting as an accelerator, most of the tumor suppressors that act as brakes can be inactivated by mutation. So you can lose these um, protein functions through mutation. So people had this idea then that there are these gene functions, these protein functions, that slow down cell growth in a normal cell. Now, the case against tumor suppressor genes comes back to basic genetics. You've got two alleles of every gene in, in, in the body. Okay? With oncogenes, you mutate one copy in a hyperactive way, and that causes tumor-like properties. Okay? These rare mutations in oncogenes act in a dominant fashion. With tumor suppressor genes, each copy of the allele produces a protein. So if you knock out one allele, if you mutate one copy of a tumor suppressor gene, you've still got a good copy being made. And if you've got a good copy or a good break in a car, then that cell is not going to grow in an uncontrolled way. So tumor suppressor genes, you have to knock out both alleles to see the phenotype, which is why wild type cells are very resistant to this kind of change. Now, the chances of knocking out one copy of a tumor suppressor gene can be argued, depending on how you do your maths, can be argued to be about 
one in a one in ten to the minus six chance. Okay, a one in a million chance of hitting one copy of the tumor specimen gene. Now to knock the other copy out, you, it's another ten to the minus six chance to knock out the second copy of the same gene. Okay, so you got you know six billion base pairs. You know, a thousand base pairs is, is one allele, and therefore it's ten, you know, one in a million chance. You know, you can do the maths. It's just, you know, tablecloth maths, the sort of stuff you write down in, on the back of a, of, a, of a small bit of paper. Anyway, you can do this kind of maths, and basically, any way you look at it, it's highly unlikely that you're going to knock out both copies of the same allele in one cell, okay, to give that single cell this growth advantage so that it can outcompete with its um, neighboring cells in the ways that we discussed you know this this clonal exp expansion we discussed about you know how one cell picks up these multiple mutations so it's very unlikely that you're going to knock out both copies of the gene so if it's highly unlikely that you can knock out both copies then how do these tumor suppressor genes get knocked out if they exist 